Hello everyone, it's Lindsay here again. I've been asked to do another tutorial on my envelope dashboards. So it's this little dashboard here with an envelope on the back which you can use for receipts and notes and anything you want to put in your planner that's loose but you don't want it to fall out. So we're just going to get started. I'm going to give you your list of supplies that you need first. So you need one or two sheets of 12 by 12 paper, depending on the size of planner that you're going to make your envelope for. Um, you're going to need anywhere from about 5 inches all the way to 11 and a half inches, depending on the size that you need. You also need a paper trimmer some adhesive, a pair of scissors, a We Are Memory Keepers envelope punch board. There's a link below for you if you want. You can also pick it up at Michael's. Um, it comes with a scorer nicely tucked into the board so you don't lose it unless you don't put it back like I do. <laughs> um, it also comes with all the measurements that you need for all of your envelopes. So once you know what size of planner pages you want, um, then you would find the closest envelope that matches it and you would use that size. Today I'm going to be making a personal size planner one. And so I'm going to use the three and a half by six and a half envelope, which means that I'm going to cut a piece of paper eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. You also need a laminator. I have my swing line laminator which I purchased from Amazon and it's a pretty good laminator it hasn't done anything wrong for me yet um, it's probably one of the cheaper laminators that you can buy I believe it was around twenty dollars or something like that um, twenty between twenty and thirty dollars uh, for laminator plus you need lamination sheets as well so um, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do, I need to cut my sheet of paper eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So I'm going to line that up there. And luckily for me, because of the personal size, this um, strip that I've cut off is exactly three and three quarter inches, which is what you need for a personal size for the front of your dashboard. So eight and a quarter again. And again, I get another one. So if you can see, both of these pieces are similar, but the lining of the dots is slightly different. So depending on which way you like your dots to lay is whichever one you're going to use uh, for your cover. So put that off to just off to the side for now because we will use it again. We're going to place the envelope or the piece of paper in the envelope punch board. We're going to score it at three and one eighth. So what that means is we're going to slide this over until we hit the three and one eighth mar inch mark. And we're gonna punch using this button here. And then, you should probably take this out before you start punching. <laughs> Without it moving, you're gonna take your scoring tool and you're gonna run it just along the scoring line and how you know that you've got it on the scoring line is this butts up right against this little insert there's like a little divot in here and it butts up right against there and then you can run it along the score line now you're going to turn your piece of paper 90 degrees and you're going to line up the score line with this little jut out here and again, you're going to punch it and you're going to score. And then you're going to turn your piece of paper another 90 degrees. Again, line up your score line with your, with the jutting out thing and score. And then you, oh, haha. <laughs> you can tell when you've 
missed something because obviously it didn't punch anything out because I didn't punch it. There we go. <laughs> so we punched it now and we're going to turn it one last time. Line up your score line. Score it and punch it. So there's the template for your envelope. You can also use the other side of the envelope punch to round the corners on the smaller portions of your envelope so it gives a nice round corner I don't do it on these because these two sides I cut off um, if you want to leave the envelope portions on there then you could round those off and it makes it a nice um, it gives it a nice profile like when you're actually using it as an envelope I like to give myself a little bit of room inside my envelopes so we're going to end up cutting that off um, so that's what we're going to do now so you need your paper trimmer again sorry I just bumped my light and at the two and a half inch mark I'm going to line up my long score line on the two and a half inch mark on my paper trimmer and then that makes it overhang the cut the cutter and you're just going to cut and I do this for both sides so again the two and a half inch mark line up the score line and trim so now your envelope looks something like that now what you're going to do is fold in your sides and I usually use the scoring tool to smush down the edges that's my technical term of the day smush uh, just to make the paper flat because it does give a little bit of a, a lip when it on the score line and then you're gonna fold over whichever edge you want for your I'm just gonna move these extra pieces for the bottom of your envelope okay so now your envelope is just about done you can take your adhesive and you're gonna run adhesive just along the two diagonal points that match up with your envelope just to seal it off give it a good solid seal again you don't have to do this part um, just because when you do laminate it this will all stay together anyways but it's a good idea to do it and then that way when you run it through the laminator you're not holding a ton of things together okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut off this envelope flap and the reason I do that is to give the envelope a little bit more flexibility in the lamination when it's folded over otherwise you're going to end up with a flap that won't stay closed um, as it is the flap does sometimes flip open so sometimes I like to well it usually goes behind any of my books but sometimes I'll use an ollie clip to um, to keep the envelope closed if it keeps coming open and it's bugging you um, you could also just leave this flap off um, you could laminate just this and leave this portion off of your dashboard if you decided you didn't want the flap there because this ends up becoming like a fairly tight seal so if you stuck something in there it's not going to immediately fall out if you didn't have a closure on it so it's really up to you whether you put this back on or not um, I do like to have it on I also use this portion as sort of a bookmark as well so if I've got a page in my planner that I want to go to quickly I'll open up to that page and then whatever envelope is behind it I'll flip this over um, and use that as a page marker and then I can just go in and easily flip back to it so there's that portion of your of your dashboard we're now going to make the front portion of your dashboard and the envelopes end up being just slightly less than six and three quarters on this one. 
And so I'm going to trim my paper to personal size, which is this PT here. That's my personal tall measurement. And so there, I've got all of my pieces cut for my dashboard. And if I was to flip this over, this would be, this would look, this would be the, f the front or the outside of the um, dashboard. And then this would be the inside of your dashboard. Now, if you wanted to, you could put a to-do list here. You could put, you could draw some lines on it. You could put another piece of paper there if you wanted. Like I could stick another piece like this on it, which maybe I'll do. That sounds fun. If you didn't want a blank piece, that's the beauty of using just regular scrap of paper is that if you added two pieces together, it's not going to become too thick. So I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive on just to keep it all together here. So I'm not very straight at that, but that's okay. All right. So, so now that's how my outside would, or my inside would look. Um, you can also at this time add a tab on the top if you wanted. You could use, um, the only thing I wouldn't recommend using is puffy stickers. So like, I don't really have a, I guess I don't really have any tabs right now that are not that are Valentine's Day stuff but I guess I could just I'm gonna stick this on there there you go so I just used a sticker stuck it on and have it sticking out the top a little bit so that it it acts as a tab when you have it done Okay, so now what you're going to do is grab a lamination sheet and I always start with this, I guess it's going to go that way now. So make sure that when you're putting it in your lamination sheet that your front paper is back. So this is your front here. And you're going to flip that over and put it in this way. Then you're going to take your envelope portion. Okay, so this one is secure. Now what I like to do is put a tiny little bit of adhesive on either end. And it doesn't really show once it's been laminated. And I like to line this up with a line on my board. And then I like to put this at about a quarter of an inch away. That gives you enough room for an insert inside your dashboard, um, just so that it's not, it just sits in there nicely with a quarter of an inch there. And then you're gonna take your envelope flap if you decide to put it on, and you're gonna put a tiny little bit of adhesive on it again and you're going to put this one at about an eighth of an inch. And I do that so that it nicely nests in between the one quarter mark. So as you can see, it's all nicely lined up. All of the edges are as close to line up as you can. Obviously, the envelope is a tiny bit less than six and three quarters, so I kind of measured sort of in the middle of where this would go and then the envelope flap just sits right along the edge there. Okay, so now we will run it through the laminator. So let me just put it off to the side for a second. If you didn't put any adhesive down on the pieces as you were putting them on the lamination sheet, you would have to hold each of these sheets just because this edge of the envelope 
is a little bit thick and so sometimes the laminator will push it and so you could end up moving the envelope when you're trying to laminate. Um, so you're going to slide it in and try and get it in the middle as close to the middle as you can. Sometimes I don't end up like that. I usually put my hand underneath just to give it an even balance. Hopefully you can see that at the bottom there as it's going in. And then you can start to see it come out the back now. All nicely laminated. And with the adhesive on each of the pieces, it makes it so that you don't have to hold on to the pieces as it's going through the laminator. Move this so you can see more of it. Do, do, do. Need some like Jeopardy music or something here. All right, so the envelope has been laminated once. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to move this off to the side for a second, is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to use it to score along the envelope line. And the reason why I don't use an X-Acto knife is because you can cut straight through everything <laughs> and then it's like you might as well start over. All right. So I've scored from here all the way down and across this line. And then you're going to make sure the envelope is open. And then what I like to do is send the sheet through the laminator again, but this time from the envelope flap side through first. This just gives it, sorry, I have all kinds of stuff here on my desk. This just gives it an extra bit of a seal. It also reseals along, or not reseals, but pushes down the back portion of where we cut with the envelope. And it also catches any of the missing sections. Sometimes if you laminate, something might be sticking up a little bit too high, and so it doesn't quite laminate the first time, but through the second time, it seems to help and make things all secure. Okay, so this is just about done. Now as you can see, this is still open. So that's good. I really like making these dashboards. They're so much fun and they're interchangeable because they're removable and you can keep them. So like next year, if you wanted, you could use the same dashboards or you could make more, which I tend to do. <laughs> um, I've got, oh geez, this is how many dashboards I've got right now. <laughs> Um, not all of them are envelope dashboards, really just these ones are envelope dashboards, and I love them. They're great for, they're great for your planner, and like I said, you can, you can mix and match after you've made a bunch of them. You can share them with your friends if they all have the same size of planner that you do. Um... You all can make a whole bunch of them and then just share share as many as you want. Okay, so now what we're going to do is trim off the excess of the lamination sheet. And so I like to line up I like to line up my lamination sheet just on the edge of this so that it does give a little bit extra 
um, lamination around and it's really hard to see because it's clear but it gives about an eighth of an inch um, border and so just be aware with the top piece that you are going to run into your heart or whatever you stuck here so I tend to go until I am just about by the by the thing and then I lift it up move this down push it back in and run it all the way through so it's almost cut all the way to the heart and it's almost cut all the way to the heart there so I can just take my scissors and cut around so that's what I will do now there's that piece Trim inside here a little bit more. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> I tend to cut off screen for some reason. All right, so there you can see that I've cut. Actually, you can probably see this side better. And I've cut that straight out. So now we just have this corner here that we need to cut off. Oops. I try and use my paper trimmer for just about every single edge that I can. And then it just makes it easier and everything's kind of uniform. So I find sometimes that lamination sheets, when they're pointy or when they're a straight angle, they're really, really sharp. So I tend to round off the corners. And while I'd love to use a corner rounder for this portion, my corner rounder is not strong enough to go through the lamination part. So I just trim off excess with my scissors. So there my corners are all rounded. I'm not going to poke myself with my envelope. <laughs> you can um, you can score this just a little bit. You can put it on the scoring board here. and just run that through. I find that helps a little bit with it uh, folding. So it folds a little nicer that way. And there you have it. There's your dashboard with an envelope. And then when you're gonna put it on your books, You would just put it around whatever book you're, you want it on, and you just fold that over just like that. And then, like I said about keeping a special place, if you had a special place that you wanted to keep, you could put that in front of it and then just close it up. Oops. Close it up like that, and your place is saved for the next time that you want it to go into there. So you can use it as a bookmark as well as an envelope closure if you chose to leave that portion on. So I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. It was kind of a quick one, but hopefully um, you'll be able to make your own envelope dashboards. Have a great day. Bye.